uh, do you think this knee-jerk reaction in the bond markets uh, with a sell-off in the, uh, with the correction in yields and uh, the rally in bonds that we are seeing right now is just that knee-jerk? So I think the the price action, at least in the FX market, that that sort of makes sense. Uh, markets were expecting a bit more um, firm guidance on that front. But the bond market, I, I completely get the price action there uh, in the sense that bond yields are falling. They've got some comfort that the BOJ is looking to deliver on um, um, pairing back their purchases. Um, and that's what the market was looking for, some guidance. I mean, if you have a look, for example, at the 30-year JGB, for example, a lot of the investors there were saying, you know what, we'll buy JGB 30 years when it goes above 2%. But then it, it was going above 2%. We got to as high as, I think, around 220 last week. Yeah. And pretty much most of the clients that we were speaking to were not expressing any interest in buying JGBs because they didn't feel that they were getting the guidance from the BOJ. Right. Mm. To some degree now, we're getting that guidance. So they feel a bit more comfortable... Um, with what the BOJ is doing. So without the, the numbers, yields, without just the direction so of I policy, think, the, just the policy direction I think is policy giving them that confidence to get into the bond markets? Well, definitely. I think that, plus if you have a look at the data that we've had in the US over the last couple of days, mm -hmm. uh, PPI has come in softer, uh, CPI has come in softer, we had initial jobless claims come in softer as well. So I think there's this underlying view that you know bonds are probably poised more to rally. So, um, David Roche, who's an independent macro strategist, he's a friend of the show, uh, he wrote in, uh, and if you can just bring up his uh, quote plate, he said that uh, he expects no change in interest rates until next time, right? But it's likely that a reduction in purchase of JGBs uh, would happen and that some sort of plan will be announced on the QT front, on quantitative tightening, though I think they've laid out that it's not going to be uh, anytime soon. Maybe it'll take a year or two years for the transition to happen. The positioning, the positioning he had in the market ahead of this decision was we are short JGBs and are now slowly building long yen positions again. So obviously that was where the market positioning seemed like. And so there's a reversal of that happening. You're buying bonds uh, in lieu of the decision by the BOJ and you are selling the currency. Correct. Yeah, that, that's what their client was was recommending. I mean, in terms of the views that we're looking at, I think, you know, in terms of the BOJ, we've got to read the statement firstly, but I'm not sure whether they've actually laid the groundwork to actually hike in July. Uh, our view is that that's probably more likely than not. Um, so we're expecting the BOJ to hike in July, but it's going to be heavily contingent on what dollar yen does. Yes. If dollar yen is going to be trading anywhere between 156, like current levels, and closer to 160, then I think that the BOJ will actually deliver that hike. But if dollar yen is trading, say, below 155, and it looks like the Fed's possibly going to be cutting as early as September, yeah. then arguably the BOJ's got more time in its hands to just sit it out on the sidelines. So it is something in play. I don't think that the BOJ has got a firm view, but at the moment, I think the consensus seems to be that the BOJ will deliver a hike in, in July.